property, the Getty Fire continues to burn in the Sepulveda Pass, destroying at least five homes. It broke off just before 2 a.m. and has burned at least 500 acres. Let's get up to Larry Welk overhead in Sky 5 with the latest. Larry? Well, a new hot spot here on uh, hole number four, I believe, at Mountain Gate Country Club. You can see that uh, a lot of flames have just picked up in the last 10 minutes or so. Now, there's some unburned fuel up in that area. There's a lot of uh, brush and very uh, tall chaparral that has not been burned. And I believe that firefighters are going to go ahead and let that burn through. They've got lots of assets up there at the top of that hill. In fact, we count about 12 to 15 camp crews that are waiting for that fire to burn up into that area. And uh, that's very good news here. They don't want to have to come back here if the... But lots of helicopters and a couple of S-2 airplanes have just arrived to continue with that fire retard line jumping into the Palisades and points west because that's a lot of trouble if the fire jumps that fire line. We're seeing new hot spots over there on Tiger Tail, but it out. So I would say things are looking better right now, but definitely not out of the woods here as this fire continues to burn very much out of so here, this is a great example of a lot of the complex um, uh, landscapes that we are increasingly seeing at the center of these wind-driven fires. These are on the wildlands urban interface. These are suburban, ex-urban communities and very complex topographies. Typically, um, like here in the Santa Monica Mountains, very much up, down, very steep-sided cliffs. Uh, and then this, just like this golf course here, you see a mix of of housing, so developed, paved, etc. Um, heavily irrigated, in this case, um, golf courses. In other cases, we see orchards and, and things of that nature, uh, vineyards. And then um, contiguous coastal sage scrub or chaparral, if we're talking about here in Southern California, um, could be oak woodland, other communities elsewhere. But this huge mix of, um, of vegetation types, ecological communities. Typically, though, um, this is always referred, referred to as fuels. And so this is adopting the language of our fire professionals, and it's, it's understandable, but, but those things are not fuels. Those things are the home to a wide array of organisms that have a huge array of ecosystem services that are provided to us. So simply considering everything fuel uh, misses an important understanding um, and, and interaction we have with the natural world. Um, uh, now, as we go fo forward in the time after this fire and other fires, what we're going to see is this patchiness, this, this quilt work, um, is only going to become greater and greater. So now, in addition to all these existing things, like the freeway, like the built structures, like the irrigated landscapes, we're also going to see increasingly patchy um, uh, communities. So, so areas that have been burned recently, and then a patch that hasn't. Now, that, that natural patchiness, or we call heterogeneity, is a good thing. It's not, it's not necessarily great to have a contiguous... Um, uh, you know, monotypic uh, community all throughout. Um, these fires are acting to, to add heterogeneity. And so in one sense, that's good. But in the other sense, it's going to make even more complex conditions for predicting future fire behavior and, uh, and other responses to disasters. Um, uh, in, in this case here in the Santa Monica, this is a great example, um, perhaps an extreme example, but we see this same phenomenon going on across the state of California. And it's a continuous thing we need to think about in our, our new normal of, of changed climate and increased um, extreme weather events and uh, ever more um, uh, propensity for wildfires.